Okay guys, so in the previous video, we went ahead, finished our tracking within PF Track, and exported the entire thing to Maya. So in this section, I'm going to show how I'm going to use the track data to create a simple object which is going to help us in creating the entire landscape. So basically, this video is like the crucial starting point where you're going to learn how to match up or create 3D objects to match your real world objects. So let me go ahead and open up my file which is coming from PF Track. So here I have my PF Track data. I have my camera. Okay, that's too small. Let me go ahead and uh, I'll increase the size of this locator scale. So let's say about 10. So I have a large camera there. I'll increase the locator size. So I have a camera there and I have my locators which are nothing but the object. If I play through, you can see my timeline is already set. If I play through, you can see the object is moving and my camera stays still the whole time. Not only that, you should be able to see the image plane there at the back. Sometimes it might give you this issue where it starts clipping. So if such a thing happens, just decrease the depth on this image plane and it should come close enough that it does not clip. Now, uh, there are a few uh, initial things I want to change before I actually go ahead. So first thing is the camera itself. It has a lot of keyframes, but we know that it has no animation. So if I go ahead and check the animation on this, you can see every single thing is flat. So there is no point having any keys, but still it doesn't matter having them. The point is you should not be changing any of them. So to make sure I don't, I'll go to the channel box and uh, I'll select all these channels which are present and I'm going to go ahead and lock all of them. Uh, you can go ahead and lock and hide, but again, I don't want to re uh, unhide them at a future date again. So let me go ahead and just lock these all so that now what happens is that my camera is locked. I can't move it or I can't rotate it. So even if I'm in the camera view, I'll not accidentally change anything, especially if I have auto keyframing on. So that's my camera. Next, I have my object itself, but there is a different issue here. If I select these locators, which are nothing but the tracking markers I had placed on the object, you can see none of them have any keyframes. And by that, you can see there are no red color uh, swatches here, nor any red ticks here in the timeline. So the reason for that is apparent if I open the outliner. In the outliner, we had all the PF track data in the PF track data node, within which we have the camera, which is static, but with a lot of keyframes. Then we have an object motion group, which has all the tracking markers. The object motion group is the one which actually has all the keyframes. So it's a group which has all the keyframes and not the objects inside the group. So there are loads of features which this uh, gives me because I can put anything I want into the group. I can make this a group a parent of any object and all the objects will inherit the motion of this parent directly. So I'm going to be making use of that in this video. So let's exactly see what I'm going to be doing here anyway. I'll go ahead and switch over to the camera view. Oh, the trackers are too big here. Let me reduce that. Okay, so now the main thing I want to be doing is replace this rod with a landscape. We all know that already. But the problem is I don't really know what is the size of this rod in Maya or I don't exactly know from where to where it's supposed to be. I don't know what section I have to replace or where the hand is supposed to be touching or how I need to model the landscape around the hands to make sure it looks like I'm actually holding the landscape rather than a cylinder. So to avoid these kinds of uh, headache issues while modeling, it's best to actually have a 3D model of the cylinder itself, which you can use as reference while modeling. So that's what we are doing in this video. We are going to create that object, the object which is interacting here within Maya. So to create it, I'll just go ahead to the perspective view. I'll directly go ahead, create a cylinder. Now, what I did is shift right click in the viewport and that got me the options for all the basic creation tools. So I just created the cylinder there. Now I want the cylinder to be present within this group. I want it added within there. So I'll just go open the outliner, middle click, drag and drop that cylinder into the object motion. 
and obviously if uh, other people are going to be making use of this file I definitely suggest using your own naming convention rather than whatever your file has come with now I put in the cylinder but as you can see the object still stays the same place it does not actually go and snap to the cylinder or do anything such miraculous things to help you out now the reason is Maya is actually quite smart to think that you actually want the cylinder to stay in the same place and you did not want it moved so it went ahead and added in negative values from the group center to keep the cylinder in the same place and orientation if you want to change that you can select all these values and zero them out so the cylinder goes exactly smack to the center of the group now if I go to the camera you can see obviously this is completely wrong I do not want the cylinder to be facing this way what I wanted to be doing is the cylinder to be facing in the Z axis right because that's what we set the cylinder axis to be in PF track so what I can do is uh, I'll just go ahead to the creation parameters for this cylinder within the attribute editor here I have an axis option obviously I can go ahead and rotate the cylinder but this I find is very easier so I'll go ahead and instead of the Y axis I'll go give it a 1 and Z axis so the cylinder itself is pointing in this direction now once I have that basic thing set up I notice that I have too many divisions on the cylinder I don't really need so much so I'll also go ahead and reduce a bit of that so let's say about 8 divisions now that is done also have too many uh, too much thickness on the cylinder so I can go ahead and reduce that so it matches my actual object a bit better okay that too is done obviously the cylinder is too small I need it to be extended uh, back and forth completely so I go ahead increase the height so it matches up even there okay that's done too but there are a few issues with this the first issue is my original cylinder that I have okay let me disable the polygon rendering the original cylinder I have as you can see is not straight it's kind of bent so the new cylinder I'm adding the 3d one should also follow through with it if I'm trying to be accurate or else what I can do is make sure it's only accurate in the regions where I'm holding it so both of your both of them are your options but if you uh, take my advice I suggest try to make the entire object accurate because you have no idea what you or someone else might be making use of uh, the cylinder data for so what I want to be doing now is uh, add in divisions on the cylinder to make sure it bends so I'll go ahead and add in a couple of divisions on its height and now I want the whole cylinder to bend completely so the best way is to go ahead and add a deformer so I'll just go ahead add a bend deformer on top of this for obvious reasons Maya again does not orient it according to any object or anything you have so what I'm going to do is take the bend handle again I'm going to go put it into the object motion group I want it in the group because um, okay let me just show you what happens first the issues if I given any curvature you can see it's curving according to the position and now when the object moves it's going to keep changing its curvature which is obviously completely wrong so I don't want it to be doing that so I can go put the bend handle into the object group and now because the handle also has the same motion the object shape does not change and that's what I want so once that is done I can go to the channel box you can see it has loads of changes in values I'll go ahead zero out everything except scale so it gives me a default orientation for this now first thing I know I want this uh, bend handle to be oriented according to the object itself so let me go ahead I'll hold J on the keyboard with rotation axis is on so I can go ahead uh, flip it on the axis so it's actually aligned to the object itself I'll reduce my curvature so I can actually see what's happening to the object okay so slight curvature there okay I have this now I can go back to my camera I can see that the curvature is exactly wrong that's the wrong curvature I did not want it I can go reverse the curvature too and try to get exactly whatever is it that I want so I can go ahead change it how I want on the fly and try to get the results I'm looking for so what I'm going to do is give it a certain amount of curvature first and then 
play through to see whether if it matches and if it does not match at a particular frame but it matches somewhere else I can rotate this curvature to match it up but to help us what I know for sure is that the curvature the axis of curvature is between these three markers so these two form the axis and there's a yellow marker which was at the back so I know the curvature axis is between these two because I actually looked at the object uh, sorry about that I should have had some reference uh, but take my word for it it's uh, between these two objects so I can go ahead rotate the curve handle so that the z-axis of it is pointing somewhere in between these two objects so once that is done my bend handle is set I can now go back to my camera view and change the amount of curvature on this bend to just make sure that it matches up with the background I already have so that's pretty much it once I've done that my object should already match up what's there in the background so now let's just go see exactly what I've done I've added the object into a group I give the group a color so my wireframe has some kind of a color which I can observe I also will go ahead I'll turn on back face culling on this object I've just gone ahead shift right clicked on the object polygon display toggle back face culling so I don't see the back end of the actual wireframe so now with this I'll go take a play blast and show you the details or the results we have in the play blast so I'll just go ahead that I'll fast forward a bit here so that you can actually see the result of the play blast rather than sit through the whole thing. Okay, so now I have the play blast. As you can see, the entire object matches pretty well. The curvature is perfectly set. Everything is going great. Uh, the only issue I find is that here at the end, you can see that the, when the arm actually leaves it, the length of it is too long and the same thing here you can see what I'm holding is way shorter than whatever is the length of the entire cylinder so I need to reduce a bit of the length or the height of the cylinder basically and also the thickness of the cylinder is a bit too much so I also have to reduce a bit of that thickness to get in a proper close fitting on my actual live cylinder so these are the two main edits I can see which have to be made apart from that the entire cylinder looks perfectly matched to my actual footage so I could pretty much use it for modeling anything I need to replace it with so let's go ahead make these two edits I can select the cylinder this is one of the best things of having a bit of history as you can see I can go back to my poly cylinder reduce the height and it actually reduces, its uh, reduces the whole thing interactively I can see the results I can play through see whether or not it matches up and make decisions on the fly which is not as easy if you don't have history so way easier to have history so please don't delete it if you're actually not finished modeling or whatever it is so I'm going to select both of these objects and I need to move it just a little bit uh, because I need to match them up to the top edge so just moving it off a bit okay to get a tighter fit okay so as you can see this edge matches up and it looks pretty close to how this edge is matched too okay this needs to move just a little bit more and I guess I moved it a bit too much there so it's a bit of trial and error too obviously you can't get everything on one go so back to poly cylinder increasing the height a bit matching there okay let's see now okay that literally nails it that gave me the perfect result uh, absolutely no issues so what I can now do is go ahead delete history on this object so I don't have anything bogging down my system and also it helps me not crash my as often I'll go back to my perspective view obviously I don't need this cylinder to be so rugged so now I'll go ahead remove these uh, polygons at the edges here so I remove those faces there I can hit 3 on the keyboard to smooth out this entire cylinder come back to my camera you can see it's a pretty tight fit I'll go ahead turn on display subdivisions on this uh, poly cylinders uh, display options so that pretty much just gives me a much more detailed wireframe so I can observe detail I'll just reduce the amount of detail there so I'm not too bogged down there 
Uh, put it up full screen. I'll go ahead take a play blast. I'll fast forward you guys so you can just see the results. Okay, so now I have my play blast and it looks pretty neat. The object matches up perfectly with what I have in the scene. Uh, there, It's not as tight as I would like, but for what we are going to do, it doesn't really matter. Next thing you had to know is there is always going to be a little bit of motion blur to help you adjust a pixel here or there. So I have this entire thing done. Uh, now, only one last thing to finalize this whole thing. Uh, I have these locators, but having the locators does not really give me a sense of what object lies behind them. So I need to create small spears, which basically sit in uh, place of these locators to get me a proper idea about the size of these uh, so that I can replace them with the actual landscape itself. So let me come back into my perspective. I'll create... Um, Okay, I'm supposed to create spears, but I know spears, the kind of mesh it creates is just too much. So instead, I'll just create cube and I'll snap it to one of these locators. Oops, sorry, I meant a cube. And I'll snap that to one of these locators. And one thing to observe here is that if I press 3 on a cube, it just looks exactly like a spear. So that's a pretty neat technique to just create a quick spear there. So I have this, uh, you know, I have this cube. I'll just duplicate it and snap it to every one of these locators now. The last one. Okay, I have all these cubes snapped, but the problem is I am on the two, uh, three ninety second frame. If I come to anything else, they're not going to match up because they're not in the group. So I just need to put them all within the group. So let me go open up my outliner. I'll take all these cubes. I can group them under one group. I'll drag and drop that group itself inside object motion. So the group got all the translate values or whatever to match up all these. So now if I play through, you can see the cubes match up perfectly. Okay, one step done. Next thing I want to do is go ahead, smooth them all. I'll go back to my camera. I'll turn on my wireframes. I just need to scale them so that they encompass my actual object itself and nothing more. So let me turn on zoom pan on my uh, viewer. I'll use my camera display options to just zoom in to see what's happening. So can my camera zoom pan is in my camera shape node in the attribute editor. I'll just zoom in with 3D on, probably with X-ray so I can see what's happening. Select all the cubes. And I want to reduce them, but make sure they're large enough to just hide the entire marker object. Just remember that if the marker is not in focus or if it's moving too fast, you're going to have a little bit of blurring of the marker itself. Like here you can see the marker has this yellow bleed because it's not in focus. So you don't really want that out of focus region to come out peeking behind your object. So you want to make sure you're even getting that. So I have my, my entire thing set up now. If I want, I can go ahead, take a simple play blast of this, see what it looks like, and then finalize on it. Probably your lead or whoever is in your production pipeline will finalize on your tracks. So what exactly did we do in this uh, particular video? Several important ones. First off, the landscape is going to be held between your hands. So I need placeholders. I need an object which can replace the actual object I have in the live scene so that my modeling of the landscape can take uh, make use of this object so that when I place the landscape it looks exactly like it's sitting there. So I had to model out this landscape basically modeling something out which you have in the actual footage itself. Next I made sure I have all the uh, things I need to make sure the fitting is as close as possible and any markers I need to remove or replace with 3D objects, I make sure I have an object for them so I know where I have to model and where I can skip. So that's pretty much it. This is what I have now. I'll just go ahead, hide the locators. I'll take a play blast, show you the results, and then we are done here for now. Okay, so now I have my final play blast here. As you can see, the entire object matches up. The movement is great. Uh, there are no issues here, and this is pretty great to go ahead and start modeling off of. Uh, the only problem you might think of is that you can't really see the hand and finger. That's because you have not actually rotated them. So you have to think of how the object is going to look behind the hand itself. So 
according according to me this is pretty good to go ahead and start working on so that's it for this video i hope you learned uh, what exactly we did here we tried to model out a live object into 3d uh, in the next video we're going to go ahead and try to model out the landscape itself making use of this object which we have just created so i'll see you there in the next one if you have any doubts about this video you can go ahead and post me up in the Facebook group or just hit me a message in any of my comments and I'll get back to you. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.